Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to another episode. So today, before I actually even start talking about what I'm gonna do, um, I really wanna say thank you to everybody watching my videos, even you watching right now, everybody subscribing, commenting, uh, following me on Instagram. I really appreciate it, thank you. And I got a package. Yep, never mind. Okay, never mind. I thought my uh, OBD2 um, USB scanner, whatever, came in. But <laughs> anyways, uh, again, thank you so much for subscribing, commenting, following my uh, Instagram, watching my videos. And today, um, this is kind of like a part two or whatever of my previous video. If you've seen my previous video on E36, my S54, I've been trying, I've been dying actually to figure out what the heck is going on with the power, why it's been losing or why it lost so much power and then I'm not going to talk about what I did and all that, what happened in the previous, I'm just going to slightly touch uh, bases I guess and uh, if you haven't seen it I'm going to kind of get you up to date. Um, uh, the car has been lagging like really bad for like 3-4 months and finally on Friday we sort of kind of figured out what happened uh well we actually just cleared the codes in a dme in the window there was no check engine light the car drove like a freaking dream uh next day the check engine light came on cleared that and as soon as the check engine light came on it just started lagging again so uh from friday to monday and actually friday in the afternoon it was like six or seven o'clock at uh, a p.m uh cleared that car drove fine all that and the saturday evening because i didn't drive for all day but evening time chicken's light came on start lagging and then till monday I, I didn't drive it so monday morning we did uh dme scan and a knock sensor code came up bunch of or there's a few different uh reasons why it can't happen and i know on some of the models like a bmw models that uh wiring uh is an issue a sensor can be bad or you actually your engine is bad so if you don't know what NAS sensor does it's pretty much like a microphone uh slash resistor so all it does it actually listens to your engine and it, depending on the car there's like uh, i think there's some cars that have only one but i have two and it can be like four and maybe six again depending on the car but i have two and it listens to the the engine and again it goes to the block um bolts up to the block whatever um it listens to the engine and um it's what it makes sure to you know it runs good and all that it sounds good uh and it gets power going in and a power coming out so uh when it listens to the engine if it thinks that hey everything's good um i don't know how many volts it actually goes in but Whatever voltage that comes out when it thinks that no everything's good, it tells DME hey, just full power, oh, let's go. Uh, if the knock sensor thinks or hears that you know there's something wrong with the engine, it gives different voltage out to the DME saying that there's something wrong, cut the power. So it can cut the power up to like half, like a 50% of the power your engine gets, it can cut it down, to which that's what's going on. So instead of just replacing knock sensors, because I still wasn't sure if that the knock sensors need to be changed because as far as the sound of the engine from friday to monday didn't change anything it sounds the same and um <laughs> what i did is i took my uh, sensors off this is what they look like right here actually so i took them off and pu i put it on a like a piece of metal i extended the wires right here uh put it inside the car <laughs> and don't make fun of me and uh one of the things that i uh, mistakes that i made is that when i put in the car uh, when i drove it car was still lagging pretty bad but at that point knock sensor is like uh, i can't see the engine so it was too quiet for it and uh different light came on uh code saying that there's a low voltage coming out from knock sensor which makes sense because it didn't really read anything so i put it on an intake manifold and there's like a rubberish uh mount there uh, because when i put it on the chassis it actually was reading uh it reads like every little bump that you drive over and it was even worse so i put it on that 
and right now car actually drives pretty good but after 3000 rpms it just pulls like a crazy like three and a half four thousand it just super crazy driving fast so uh it still lags at the uh low ends but then i remember that when i took the my intake metal fall off there's a hose like a um, oil drain hose that goes inside the uh oil pan or whatever and it's pretty much when your intake sucks all the oil or whatever from the engine here and so it's not collecting inside it drips down and goes inside the then just so kind of circulates or whatever recycles it so i forgot to connect that hopefully that's what it is um, right now the engine is hot but it, as soon as it cools down i'm gonna connect that drive it see what's going on if it gets better good if not i'm gonna do um i did some research and i guess you can do idle speed control or uh gas pedal uh kind of reprogram or whatever so and i heard that some people done it and it works so I tried that uh, right now i'm gonna be doing oil change on my or my wife's dodge i don't drive that car but honestly not that i'm trying to you know um uh, say anything good but this car has 3.6 liter engine it drives like nuts uh, and it's a flex fuel so if you have flex fuel and you never actually tried it or you put like a 50 50 flex fuel in your car try to like get all the fuel out the all the fuel that you have fill up full tank flex fuel and drive it and i promise you if you again if you haven't tried it you haven't driven it it'll change your mind on your car and you will never go back to original fuel this car is nuts even on a drive payment you punch it and the traction just keeps going crazy turn off the cra traction it just and i've been saying that this car is, is a lot faster than this one well at least when this one was lagging but and again, i don't i don't try this car no uh my car's right here right here and there's one right there on the street i don't know if you can see it it's a 07 uh, 530i six speed manual that car is pretty fast too but anyways I'm gonna wait for the engine to uh, cool down while I do oil change on that, plug everything up or plug my hose on the intake, drive it, um, and I'll update you on uh, changes, I guess. So, see you in a little bit. So, hey, what's up, you guys? Uh, quick update. Um, it's been super hot a couple days and I haven't done anything on the car except um, I tried to paint a bumper again and this time um, it was going good the paint you can see the color this is the second time that I painted first one was way off but this is the second paint and um, if you put a clear coat on it it'll be really close to this even though camera I don't know if you guys can how good it shows in a camera all that but um it was going good and all that but then my spray paint gun decided to stop working and it starts to spray the paint to the side and all that and then dripping and all that stuff so i had to stop resend it and uh in a way it's kind of good because when i tried to put the bumper on i was going to do those quick release uh uh buttons or whatever uh when i put it on since the bumper has been sitting outside for who knows how long it kind of got deformed when i put it on it wouldn't want to go on the way it's supposed to be on the car so uh i put it on the way it is right now like send it down and all that i'm not gonna paint it just yet i'm gonna let it like stay on the car for i don't know maybe a month give it a take and take it out see if it takes the shape of the original bumper shape whatever it's supposed to be and then i can paint it and i can and i decided to get this nose panel i want to get different one off of a 97 and up i think some of the 96s the uh the older or the newer 96s have uh different grills in them so i want to get that and might as well just paint this with the bumper and the side screws at the same time so in a way kind of worked out i guess uh but 
So here's the thing, still working on trying to figure out what the heck is going on with the engine, why it's not pulling and all that. And um, there's a lot of different things that can be going on. And one of the things is the air might be getting the system to like too much air. I checked that I have uh, one of those EVAP smoke machines or whatever. So I checked there's no air leakage or anything like that. And obviously the second one is electrical. So um, since there's no check engine light, it's kind of really hard to diagnose. As, uh, especially like when I bought this car and I did S50 swap, I was kind of excited. I wanted to, like I was looking for OBD1 car because it has less electronics and all that. but it's really pain in the butt to do diagnostics because you don't have check engine light you can't do uh diagnostics the way you can do on obd2 i mean you can still do it on obd1 but not the same so got this one and well it's obd2 but there's just no check engine light coming on for the problem so i guess it's not that big of a deal for the dme and it's not throwing the code so the second other than the air is obviously electrical and uh, one of the things is the MAF sensor. Um, again, I don't have check engine light for that. Uh, but the MAF sensor, sometimes it works. It has a mind on its own. Sometimes when you uh, drive in a bump and all that, it shakes or whatever and uh, the sensor inside just changes uh, the way it works. So and again my problem was sometimes it pulls pretty good sometimes after 3000 rpm sometimes it just doesn't it doesn't change on the weather it doesn't change if it's hot or cold or anything like that so it was really really hard to diagnose so um i was at my friend's shop and i told him i that i'm going to leave the car at his shop to do actual like real diagnostics as i can't find a problem and he said, well, yeah, just stop by next week, whatever, and I'll look at it since he's uh, super busy this week. And got in the car to move it. I started and it started idling like really bad, like RPMs going up and down. I never had anything like that. I mean, I had RPMs fluctuate, but not that bad. Uh, this time it was like 200, 300 RPMs up and down, up and down for like 10 seconds. So I moved the car. Then like half hour later, I get in the car to move, the, well, to go home and start the car does the same thing i get home park it like an hour later or whatever i start it does the same thing so at that point and i was like there's definitely map sensor just going bad because um some cars you can clean the map sensor they even sell uh like a special spray whatever for the map sensor but on this one i was told not to touch it or not to clean it but it's already going out so who cares so i took it out cleaned it i didn't spray anything just just use the air clean towel or whatever and uh put it back in and <laughs> this is what it does So it starts the car, but it dies right away. Let's see what happens when I unplug or disconnect MAF sensor. It runs and runs pretty good, but here's what happens if I plug the sensor back in. Dies. So finally, I guess my math sensor decided to retire. So I bought a new one not cheap <laughs> but i had to brand new so let's see if this gonna fix not only idle problem but hopefully it's too bright but hopefully it's gonna fix my 
acceleration and all that. So let's take this out. So, okay, Tesro Decor, I don't know what kind of shots came out or if you guys can see anything good or not, but I still kind of suck at taking the videos uh, from inside the car. Still learning though, um, I'll, I'll get better, I promise. But so far, it's a lot better than what it was. It, but is it there yet? No. Is it still fast the way it was or it's supposed to be? No, it still sucks. Um, it still hesitates a lot but then if it acceler accelerates it actually accelerates so it starts to actually freaking go but if it doesn't get better uh, i'm gonna put knock sensors back where they're supposed to be go check for a codes in a dme uh and hopefully my power is gonna be back so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video i'm gonna end this here uh in the next video i'll hopefully i'll have better um news for you guys new updates and i'm gonna get new tires also probably hopefully get alignment because my tires starting to get bold on the inside maybe get bumpers painted or the bumper side skirts stuff like that so i don't know there's a lot of stuff coming up so stay tuned if you guys like the video please hit thumbs up subscribe and look out for my next video see you next time Let's try sport mode. <laughs> There's cars coming, dude. tires still not there though but we'll get there we will